Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Today, I will refresh your knowledge about the 12 cranial nerves and their common disorders. So if you're ready, let's start. Cranial nerves can have a sensory function, motor function, or both. First, we have olfactory nerve. It has a sensory function, and its main responsibility is for us to be able to smell. For the second one, we have optic nerve. It is for our vision, and it also has a sensory function. For the third and fourth nerve, they have a motor function and controls the eyes. For oculomotor nerves, it is responsible for the eye movement, pupillary constriction, accommodation, and eyelid opening. While trochlear nerve specifically controls the eye movement of the superior oblique muscle which enables us to look down. For the fifth one, we have trigeminal nerve. It has both sensory and motor function. It is responsible for face sensation and mastication. For the sixth one, we have abducens nerve. It has a motor function because it controls the eye movement specifically the movement of the lateral rectus muscle that is responsible for the lateral movement of the eyeballs. Cranial nerve number seven is the facial nerve. It has both motor and sensory function. This includes facial expressions, taste from anterior two-thirds of the tongue, lacrimation, and salivation. For cranial nerve number 8, we have vestibulocochlear nerve, which has a sensory function. This nerve is responsible for hearing and balance. Cranial nerve number 9. This is the glossopharyngeal nerve. It has both sensory and motor functions, including taste and sensation of the posterior one-third of the tongue. It transmits sensory information from your sinuses, the back of your throat, parts of your inner ear, and the back part of your tongue. It also stimulates the voluntary movement of a muscle in the back of your throat called stylopharyngeus. For cranial nerve number 10, we have the vagus nerve, which also includes sensory and motor function. The most common function of the vagus nerve is the gag or cough reflex. It also provides a sense of taste from the supraglottic region of the tongue. It allows motor control of muscle in your throat and it stimulates the muscles of organs in your chest and trunk, including the peristalsis. Cranial nerve number 11 is the accessory nerve. It has a motor function that involves the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle. This helps us to perform head turning and shoulder shrugging. Finally, is the cranial nerve number 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve, which has a motor function, specifically the movement of the tongue. Before we proceed to the most common cranial nerve disorder, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep you updated on our latest video. Let's now continue. First in our list, trigeminal neuralgia. The affected area 
is the cranial nerve number 5, and it is unilateral. The main manifestations are severe facial pain and facial spasm. For the management, carbamazepine is used to lessen the pain and spasm. We also have diazepam, which is a muscle relaxant and a sedative. It is also used to lessen the pain. Finally, is the Bell's palsy. The affected area is the cranial nerve number 7. It is a one-sided paralysis. Common manifestations include unilateral facial paralysis, incomplete closure of the affected eye, slurred speech, and drooling of saliva. Prednisone is a drug of choice. Thank you for listening. I hope you learn and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.